Okay, let's do an example of drawing the sigma and pi bonding frameworks for a molecule. And the molecule I've chosen is ethene. And I've drawn the Lewis structure right here. So let's think about the sigma bonding framework first. And this is the framework that is going to involve hybridization of atomic orbitals to form hybrid orbitals. So the first thing we want to do here is look at these two carbons and determine the hybridization on those carbons. So if I look at this first one, I see that there's a double bond and then two bonded hydrogens. So that's three things bonded to carbon. So remember, a double bond counts as only one thing. So the steric number is three, and that's going to be a trigonal planar geometry about that carbon, around that carbon. And remember that we need to mix the 2s orbital on carbon and two of the 2p orbitals on carbon to make sp2 hybrids. Okay, so that's the first step. Now let's look at the other carbon. Is there anything different about it? And so if you said that it looks exactly the same, the steric number is still three, there's a double bond, and two bonded hydrogens, then you'd be right. And so both of these carbons are sp2 hybridized. Okay, so let's also just remind ourselves of what the set of sp2 hybrid orbitals actually looks like. And so here they are. That's all three of them. And remember the bond angle here is 120 degrees. That's a trigonal planar shape. Okay, so if we want to draw the sigma bonding framework first, then what we need to do is first start by drawing the hybrid orbitals for one of the carbons, and I'm going to set it up so that it can bond with a neighbor. So you can see that my geometry looks kind of like that Lewis structure that I drew. So there's one of the carbons, so let's just say it's this one. And next I'm going to draw the sp2 hybrids for this other carbon and I'm going to make sure that that guy overlaps to form a bond, a sigma bond, a head-to-head -head overlap of those orbitals. Alright, so I'm just about there actually with the sigma bonding framework. So the last thing that we need to do here is bond our hydrogens. And so remember, the hydrogens are unhybridized. That's a 1s atomic orbital, and all of them are the same. And remember, s orbitals are just spherical. So I'm going to go ahead and bond one of those hydrogens to each lobe that isn't bonded with the other carbon. So here's our first carbon, here's our second carbon, and all of these guys are hydrogen. And those are 1s atomic orbitals. Okay? Now, there's a little wrinkle in here that we haven't discussed yet because I put this coordinate system up at the top. And so the first thing we're going to do before we draw the pi framework, we're going to figure out which p orbital is left over. So which 2p orbital remains to pi bond. Okay, so this bond right here, so I've drawn one of them, so that's a single bond with the sigma bonding framework. The pi bond we still haven't drawn the bonding framework for. And so we need to figure out which of these 2p orbitals is left over. So let's just think about the geometry of this molecule and it is planar so that means it lies completely in the plane and the two coordinates that lie in the plane based on our coordinate system z the bond axis okay and x and so the p orbitals that are pointing in those two orientations that are oriented along the x and the z those are the two that were mixed and, or hybridized with the 2s in order to form these hybrid orbitals. So we actually used 
two p x and two p z to hybridize, and so that leaves two p y remaining. Okay, all right. So let's go to the next slide and let's draw the pi bonding framework. So I'm going to put my coordinate system back here at the top. And I'm going to draw my molecule again so that we can refer to it. And we want to draw the pi bonding framework. Okay, and the last thing we remember is that 2PY is the one left over. Okay, so now when we're drawing the pi bonding framework, we get to cheat just a little bit. And what we're going to do is just draw kind of a skeletal structure for the sigma bonding framework because we have to have something to draw our, our pi bond onto. And so I'm just going to make single bonds, just connect everything together. So this represents our sigma bonding framework that we drew on the previous slide. Now, we have to draw this PY, the PY on each one of these carbons. And it's a little bit tricky because that PY orbital is actually coming in and out of the screen at you. So what we do is we make the front lobe bold and the back one dotted so that we can show that that P orbital is coming in and out of the screen. So each one of these carbons has hybridized with 2PX and 2PZ and what is left over is 2PY. So I'm going to draw 2PY on each one of these. Okay, so I'll make the bold lobe coming out and then on the other side of the carbon, this is our lobe that's behind the screen. Okay. Now it's often, what I really should have done is drawn these large enough so that they overlapped. But that's pretty inconvenient and it's hard to make sure that they're big enough and still see the rest of the drawing. So what we often do is just draw some connector there showing that this is a pi bond. Now one of the other things that I want to point out is that it takes both lobes to make one pi bond. So this is one pi bond, not two. It looks like two, but it takes both lobes for one pi bond. Okay? So we'll see other examples where we have two pi bonds and we'll see how to deal with that. Often it involves drawing two different pi bonding frameworks, one for the for one of the pi bonds and one for the other.